Welcome to this episode of the Sports Detective Podcast Show. My name is James Williams, and today we talk about if Emmanuel Acho is in it just for the clicks. Why are we talking about this? Well, last week there was a fake tweet that was going around that basically said um, it was a report that Caleb Williams was basically forcing the Bears' hand and saying, you guys are not going to draft me with the number one pick. And Emmanuel Acho um, fell for this tweet, and then when he kind of got caught and said, hey, man, like, People were saying, like, hey, dude, like, this is a fake story. You got to, like, own up to this a little bit. He basically kind of, like, defended his tweet and said he was in it for the click. So we'll go ahead and just read this um, whole story here from Awful Announcing. We'll kind of summarize basically just what I said, but maybe give a little bit more of a context here. So we see the article here. Emmanuel Acho gives away the game after getting called out for sharing a fake Caleb Williams story. Um, So let's go down here a little bit. If you spent any time... Any amount of time on X, formerly Twitter, in the past few days, you've probably come across the fake report that Caleb Williams told the Chicago Bears that he does not want them to select him with the number one pick in the NFL draft. After stripping away what few false fail safes, what few fail safes were in place and devaluing the blue check mark, Elon Musk's X has become a free for all for fake news like this. The fact the post has received. Um, over 10 million views speaks for itself. It, this is a tweet that I saw. I thought it was very interesting. If it was real and it was verified, I was probably going to do a video about it. Um, but then I kind of immediately found I'm like, oh, like I can't find any other sources other than this, you know, mysterious one that is like doing it. That's why, you know, it is kind of good to um, for sources. It's like, OK, you know, it, are the big guys also reporting it? Because if the big guys are also reporting, so NFL, that would be like Rappaport, Schefter, those type of guys, maybe Jake Glazer. If those guys are reporting it, there's more legitimacy to it versus, you know, some person that you've never heard of with a blue check mark doing it. Um, we'll continue here. Given the time of the year for NFL and college football, the demand to be on first breaking news has led to few instances of media members failing for fake stories on social media in recent days, along with many folks initially falling for the Williams post Chris Mad Dog Russo fell for an Andy Reid retirement story on his Sirius XM show Friday um, I've never heard of that one uh, meanwhile USA Today fell for a, J- a fake Jalen Milrow post I've never heard of that one either um, count Fox Sports Emmanuel Acho as those who fell for the Williams report given that he already has some strange takes about the Bears potentially drafting the USC Trojans quarterback so a little bit of background on that story. I almost did a post on that because it was so, you know, kind of idiotic, his logic for it. Basically, his, his uh, case for the Bears to draft Caleb Williams isn't like, you know, the typical, um, you know, take that somebody would have. Be like, hey, Caleb Williams, this guy is a generational player. He's the next Patrick Mahomes. Look at his talent. Look at the arm strength. The Bears, Justin Fields is still a little bit of a question mark. There's things that we like about him, but he's not a guarantee. You know, that would be like a typical, like, hey, that's why the Bears should draft Caleb Williams. Emmanuel Acho's take was they shouldn't draft, they should draft Caleb Williams because if they trade back and get a bunch of picks for Caleb Williams, it's more likely they're going to miss a lot of those picks. So they shouldn't, you know, have more swings at the apple because they would mess up some of those picks. And just the, the logic of that, in a way, like, it makes sense where it's like, if you have more draft picks, you're going to miss on more of your picks. But when you have more draft picks, you're more than likely going to hit on more of your picks, which is where his like argument was just kind of like stupid for lack of a better word. Um, so that that's basically like his uh, logic there where he was like, well, they're going to just miss on like, you know, half of these picks that they trade for anyway. But, but it's like, oh, well, they'll also hit on half their picks. And the quarterback drafting the quarterback is, you know, a less than 50 percent chance of it working in the first round so that's actually the argument of why people say that they should trade back because ah you know i don't know about kayla williams so um so that's basically kind of his argument for that um we'll continue here he seemed more than happy to jump on the news and discuss it on his tiktok account so we'll go ahead and just watch this whole video here it's like 35 seconds I've never seen anything like this. No, not this freaking pimple. The fact that Caleb Williams, he says he wants assurances that the Bears are going to trade the number one overall pick before he declares for the draft. Caleb Williams wants nothing to do with the Chicago Bears. Here is why. 
The Bears have yet to have a 4,000-yard passer in the history of their illustrious franchise. Never have they had a 4,000-yard passer in their franchise history. So what Caleb Williams is saying is the gravitational pull downward of the Bears is too strong for him to lift that franchise up. This is wild stuff from a college quarterback. I'm going to keep you all updated. Okay, so there you have it. There's the post there, too. Now, again, like I said earlier, I saw that tweet. I was going to do a story about it, but then I found out, like, I did a little digging. I'm like, oh, this is fake. And then I also kind of, like, thought about it a little bit afterwards. I'm like, well, if Caleb were to actually do this, which, I like, it could happen, probably less than likely that he would end up doing something like that. But if he were to do it, it probably wouldn't be, like, you know, January, you know, 12th or whatever this happened. Um, it would probably be something like, you know, March 15th, or it could even be a week before the draft. It could be something like that. Like he has time to make the decision, you know, actually meet with teams. Like, you know, that's kind of what like a smart, rational person, you know, that actually cares about his career would probably do rather than just being like, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm just, you know, the bears kind of seem like they suck. I don't want to go there. And it's like January If anything, that'd be kind of immature. And that would cause me red flags anyway, for the bears to draft him. Um, There is like a little bit of a thing, though, here with Caleb Williams. And I thought about, you know, maybe doing like a little bit of an investigative thing on this where it's like, I'm not sure if he likes the Bears and he might be a Packers fan because there's like one thing where he like did, I believe, like a tweet tweet that was like, uh, you know, the Bears shouldn't draft Caleb Williams like, you know, they should trade the pick or something like that. It was something along those lines. Um, Again, I'm not sure if that was fake. It was something I saw on Instagram. Um, There was another thing that I did see that was, you know, true or there was like i don't know if you guys have seen the thing or like jair alexander of the packers goes um behind like a reporter who's doing a story for like local green bay news um in front of lambeau stadium and jair alexander goes up behind the reporter and goes like yeah go pack go or the pack is back or something and like um and and then like the reporter is like oh a fan said something there which obviously he wasn't a fan um you know fan agrees and then it's like um you know, Caleb Williams quoted that tweet and was kind of like laughing at him. He like, this is great. So I think there might be like, Caleb Williams might be sneakily like a Packer fan. So that could kind of debate, you know, contradict like him wanting to go to the bears. And I think that could be things that you could talk about. Um, And I think that actually gave maybe a little bit of validity to this report, but um, we'll just kind of continue this story here too, because you guys aren't going to believe what Emmanuel Acho said when he got called out on this, because it was obviously, um, you know, a fake story as we discussed. So we'll read here. Turns out followers updated Acho on the fact that he was discussing a bogus story. And when it, he got called out over it, instead of owning up to his error, the FS1 analyst admitted that it didn't matter if the story was fake. So as long as he got some engagement out of it. So this is, um, he, Acho did delete this tweet, by the way. So you can see here, guys. Someone uh, replies to him and is like, so you purposely posted fake news for clout and money? Laughing emoji, crying emoji, shrugging emoji. This is what Acho says. Nah, in the event it was fake, I posted it to the least serious website because no no lives are being lost based on that post. Either way, real or fake, the video would garner traction, which would increase followers. More followers equals larger brand deals. Understand? Okay, do you understand his logic there, guys? He's like, it, it's like someone like asked you, like, hey, dude, are you cheating on your girlfriend? And be like, no, nah, I'm just going out and having sex with a bunch of people. It's like, what? Like, dude, like, <laughs> that's the definition of cheating. You're cheating. And that's what Acha's doing here. He's like, they're like, so you, you're, you know, you posted this fake story anyway, so you could get more clout and followers. And he's like, Nah, I did it. I did definitely didn't do that. I posted it because I could get um, more followers and larger brand deals and more money. And it's like, so so you, you you did you did do that. You did it just for the posts here. And it's one thing too, guys. Like I said, I said this multiple times in this episode already. I would I was gonna do this, and then I found out that like, oh, this isn't fake, so I didn't do it. I actually did one yesterday on an NBA trade. Um. I did a video about it and then like I found out I'm like, okay, let me just double check. I should have done it before I recorded it, but I went back and I'm like, Oh wait, this isn't real. I'm just not going to post it. So I didn't post it because I didn't, you know, I didn't want to put out something that's fake and I don't even have that much of a following. 
so like the, the fact that Archer does this stuff and the fact that he admitted it is very kind of like, you know, eyebrow raising here. So um, there's kind of like the quote of that. Um, please don't show any of this to JJ Reddick. Huh? That's funny. Um, Acho would later delete that ex post and initially an initial TikTok video, though he would clarify that he knew the report was suspect, but made the video anyway. We didn't do it on the show because it seemed fishy. I made a TT video, a video on TT where I led by pointing out a pimple on my face, LOL. So the fact that you pointed out that you have a pimple on your face means that that we were supposed to take it as satire. I, I don't understand his point here. This, so we weren't supposed to take it seriously. If a TT video makes you lose respect for me, then I didn't have it in the first place. And that's fine. Hoping my show gets canceled is too far. Love and peace. Um, let's see here. Here's the thing. As a media manager expected to work within the constructs of journalistic integrity, Acho's argument here is terrible. Sacrificing integrity and truth in the name of clicks is everything that people in sports media world are constantly pushing back against it devalues not just your work but the work of your peers um and, and that's basically the whole article there I, I just wanted to read that last little point because i wanted to comment on that because that last little point is exactly right now emmanuel Acho might say hey i'm not a journalist so me doing something like that isn't necessarily as bad as someone literally making up a fake story even though that's not what he said um that that wasn't his argument with that being said, though, if you are going to push somebody else's fake story for clicks and for clout, I think that is absolute, you know, garbage. And you shouldn't do that. And that's something that I try not to do as someone that is trying to create sports content. Um, I think we learned a little bit about Emmanuel Acho for this. Um, maybe it was a thing, too, if I were going to have a defense of him. Maybe it's a thing, too, where he's like, he got caught and he's he's one of those people that has a problem admitting when they are wrong which like that is kind of like the antithesis of like a lot of those talking head argumentative shows it's like you can never ever be wrong no matter what the evidence says and you're always going to work back or at least in some degree you're always going to work backwards from your conclusion um and maybe that's what he's doing here where he's like i'm always right so i'm going to work backwards from my conclusion the only problem with that is when you do that your argument doesn't make sense a lot of times so um, one, one last thing here that the, the part on the part of like the, um, um, people losing respect for you over this, that is a hundred percent true. I don't know if you follow Skip Bayless, watch Skip Bayless. If you heard other people in sports journalism, sports media, talk about Skip Bayless, Skip Bayless does not have the respect of a lot of people. Um, it's not necessarily because of like his LeBron takes, even though that's part of it and kind of how his, you know, um, you know, talking head thing that he's done that has probably created a lot of jobs for people, but it's also a thing where people seem it is kind of shady. I have this book behind me to the over my left shoulder. It was on the show yesterday, um, or I guess the last few days. And there's a part in it where it talks about like the 90s Cowboys because Skip Bayless was obviously a journalist for the 90s Cowboys. And I'm sorry I'm bringing Skip in this, but I, I just kind of want to point out an example about this because this is what this, you know, incident here reminded me of. Um, the, Skip Bayless released a book in the 90s about the Cowboys. And it's basically, you know, your standard like Cowboys book of any other journalist at the time there. But Skip did this tactic in the book to sell, you know, sell more copies of it. And his copy or the, his tactic to sell more copies of it is he basically put like it was only like two pages of the book. It had nothing to do with the story, it had nothing to do with, you know, building the character that he's talking about. And he basically alluded to Troy Aikman being gay. Because like some bogus security guard like said he saw him walking out of a club with a dude one time. And it's like there's no other reporting of it. There's no. Well, first off, like now we look at it almost 30 years later. It's like, who cares? And two, it's like, like you, you did that. Basically, you had no evidence of it. We still don't have any evidence of it um, 30 years later. And you did it just to sell books. Which is the same thing Acho did here. He he posted this just for clicks. Now, now, was Skip's a little bit more planned out and a little bit more devious? Yeah, but it's still pretty dirty. And this Acho thing kind of reminded me of that. Obviously not as severe as that, um, but just something I wanted to point out. So there you have it, guys. Is Emmanuel Acho in it for the clips? Did he just not want to admit that he was wrong? Tell me what you think about in the comments. Um, 
this is kind of an interesting story to me. So thank you very much for watching. If you got to this point so far, um, my name is James Williams. As I said at the top, we've been doing this podcast show for a few years now. We're just starting to post our clips on YouTube. We're posting clips over the last like month or so. So make sure if you like this video, hit that like button. If you like content like this, please hit that subscribe button. Really helps support the show as we are still just very you know new to this and trying to grow. So thank you very much for watching. I will talk to you next time.